Good morning, YouTube. It's Morgan, aka the Mountaineer, out uh, early on a Sunday morning for a quick hike. Uh, initially, I was going to come down here, down the shooting range road, and do this little quick loop, Polecat and Ballard Trail. But there's a gate somewhere up here, pretty uh, about a mile from the range, and it was closed. So, uh, because I'm familiar with it and it's fairly short, I'm sitting here at the Overlook Rock Trailhead. Zoom in. I'm going to do it backwards this time. Uh, I'm going to, so that's right there. I'm going to trek back the road and then go this way. The Overlook is right there. That's where I'll stop again and have coffee. It sounds like it's starting to sprinkle a little bit, but uh, that's all right. I brought a poncho. I'm going to hop out and hit the trail. After my short little road hike, this is the archery range over here. This is where I hit the trail up here. Well, I made it to the overlook. I um, I had my water already on, nothing fancy this morning. I'm just gonna make some uh, instant coffee, uh, Medaglio d'Oro or something like that. That's what I took backpacking. Uh, a couple weekends ago it's not the best but uh, certainly a lot cheaper than Starbucks via of course my backpack and pipe in it I have some Germain's Rich Dark Flake um, if you saw that Yabo you saw me receive that. That's from Beans. Thanks, Brian. First smoke of it. So far, so good. Beautiful morning. I left the house probably about 10 till 6. It's foggy. Sprinkled just a little bit there at the parking lot. Very humid. It's cool. It's probably low 60s, but um, a lot of moisture in the air, a lot of moisture on the trees and stuff. Uh, if you notice when I was first walking in, this view, this hillside was uh, socked in with fog. I can still see some down in the valley there. A lot of uh, sunlight coming through the trees, just beautiful.
a lot of spider webs too. <laughs> Some of them I could see ahead of time and smack with my trekking pole before I ran into it and a lot of times I ran into it. Hope y'all have been doing well. I'll get some depressing crap out of the way real quick. Tomorrow will be the one month anniversary of me being unemployed. Uh, the company I'm at, they eliminated my position. And from what I've heard through the grapevine, about a dozen other people, about a do or about a dozen people got uh, laid off. I think in large part due to this coronavirus there trying to cut expenses and stuff like that so I've been on the job hunt a little bit um, I've had a big battle not a battle but just a really hard time getting through with unemployment I registered with them and trying to get payment there was a hold and you'd call in, in West Virginia normally you know you could call your local office but right now everything's directed through one hotline and you go through and you talk to someone well one week one time a couple weeks ago they said uh, well I think I got it taken care of and I looked and it wasn't taken care of and then uh, Oh, dang. So then I called back in the next week and they said, basic, they said, well, we'll, you have to go through your local office, but they'll call you. And you can't really get hold of them. You know, anytime you call, if you get the local office's number and call it. It goes through this hotline. But anyway, so I waited and waited. This was last Thursday. I called Tuesday. They said, well, you're listed as, I think they said critical or something. They said it's the highest priority. They should be getting back to you. Still hadn't heard anything Friday, so eight days after that other call. Went down. They, The guy had mentioned uh, in that one last Thursday. See, I just have a bag of this coffee. Like I say, pretty decent, but not the best. But they, um, he said something about maybe having to go down to the local office and give them some kind of paperwork or something. It was, I guess the hold was mostly to do with, you know, my reason for being unemployed. But, uh, you know, so I drove down there. They were shut. There was a security guard, but it said, you know, security guard can't help you call this number, which all takes you back to the same number. And so my mother-in-law suggested I call the, call the governor's office. So I called them, got hold of a caseworker. She said, well, I can't promise you anything, any turnaround time or anything like that. You know, they're getting slammed, I guess. The, it's called Workforce West Virginia is the agency that you go through. She said, you know, obviously with the COVID and the number of unemployment things and even the number of things going through the governor's office to them, couldn't, couldn't uh, give me any estimate as to time. I think it was about six or eight minutes later, I got a call from Workforce West Virginia. I was on the phone for about two minutes, 45 seconds, and the guy got it straightened out and said I should get all the payments Tuesday, so that's cool. I won't, it, it won't be even with this big bump from the COVID assistance. It won't be what, um, you know, what I was making before, but, um, you know, I got severance and things like that, and I had a couple weeks of vacation they paid out, so, um, should be in decent shape there but now it's now i'm on the job hunt that's always interesting these socks i don't know if you can see that <laughs> they're terrible about 200 yards in they started slipping and uh slipping down and i just thought i'm just gonna have to keep pulling them up i think somehow it was going uphill that that did it uh <laughs> 
but uh, so I just kept hiking and really it wasn't terrible it wasn't the most comfortable thing but the interior of these shoes are soft is they're soft enough that I'm fairly safe without them but uh, anyway so that's something that's been going on a little bit stressful but uh, and not very fun but I'm not gonna I'm gonna take my time I'm not just trying to take advantage of the unemployment I definitely want to get a job but I want to find I don't want to rush in and get a job I don't enjoy I want to find something that I'll like and you know if not look forward to going to every day at least not dread going to every day so uh, put in a few applications already found found a job that sounds kind of interesting I need to uh, contact someone about but uh, well with all that we had last week my family my parents sister and her family and my family went to Emerald Isle North Carolina we had those reservations back in December or January and paid for and all that and mom was really closely monitoring the situation with the virus and luckily you know I think that was either the first or second week that it was opened back up to where people with rentals could come in. And, um, you know, it was interesting. It was not the usual, obviously, but it wasn't really that far off. Uh, basically, all the restaurants we normally go to were open they just you know 50 percent capacity and um and almost all the restaurants everybody was wearing you know all the staff were wearing um the face masks uh the majority of gift shops and stuff were open there's a um fort there that i like to go to at the far end of the island fort macon it was closed they had some stuff they had their bathrooms open which was weird because i don't even know i don't know if they've opened up the bathrooms here they had those board they've had those boarded up but and there's a beach there it's like right at the end of the island and it was situated to watch the you know entrance to the sound and things like that but the pine Knoll shores um north carolina aquarium was closed so both of those I really wanted to go to, but they were shut down. But, you know, traffic was down a little bit. It was definitely a lot less crowded. We went miniature golfing a couple times. Um, and, uh, you know, there were people there, but it wasn't super busy. But it was fun. Um, you know, I, excuse me, it was the first time we'd been in almost four years and um yeah i was really looking forward to it grew up i think i am steaming <laughs> um but you know i would go we would go there every year growing up and we went um like i say almost four years ago it was in the fall and then before that i think it was it was three years before that a little over three years and before that it was just kind of uh more regular but still irregular uh, but I really really enjoyed it um, it was fun sp uh, spending time with the family after our after my hike last time um, you know I got to see mom and dad for the first time in months and then uh, my granddad and my aunt Pat um, and then this got to see my sister and brother-in-law and nephews and spend the week with them so it was nice. It was nice feeling a little bit of normalcy. Um, you know, it was good to basically get out of the house. You know, get to restaurants and stuff, and see family.
This is good tobacco. I do enjoy this. Right behind on the mainland. Uh, from Emerald Isle is like an auxiliary air base for the Marines because Emerald Isle is maybe half an hour or so from the main gate of Lejeune, Camp Lejeune. And I think actual, you know, the actual property, some of it extends a lot closer to that, but we were Dad and I visited uh, a guy there and his wife that uh, they've become friends with. He worked at uh, a really good liquor store down there that he, Dad and my uncle would visit once or twice every time they were down there. And um, I became friends with this fella and his wife and um, actually went there uh, a couple times. They've gone to their house a couple of times and had meals and stuff and hung out. But Dad was dropping off a couple of things to him. And we went to the liquor store and went there. Had a little time with the two of us like we used to. And um, it's really neat. They have a great place there in Swansboro. And they're on the, I think, White Oak River but you can see out toward the ocean from their place. But they have a little dock. They have a little boathouse. It was where Kathy, the lady, grew up. And her brother lived right there. And her brother has, uh, I guess, remodeled the little boathouse a couple of times. It's like a bar. They didn't have it open. But you can actually take a chunk of the wall out and have it open. And uh, it was really neat. But anyway, he was, tell he was telling pretty funny stories and stuff but I didn't know that but know this but he uh, he said that that airbase I guess whenever pilots are about to get rotated back out to sea that airbase is set up to emulate um, an aircraft carrier's flight deck so um these pilots will have to go have to go qualify. I guess they have the same um, I don't know the system's name, but the system that helps them uh, take off and in that trap wire or whatever that whenever they land. So I found that fascinating. But you know, th over the years, you do see a fair bit of uh, aircraft there in the area. Saw a couple jets and chopper a couple choppers multiple times this past week and over in Moorhead City at the it's on the mainland you go to the opposite end of the island and hit the mainland uh, last time we were there there was a I can't remember what it was called it was like LCS 19 or something like that uh, Mesa Verde I want to say I can't remember what the ship type was but basically it's like a carrier or a I don't know, like a troop carrier or something like that, but I think it can also fit two hovercrafts, which I've seen some of those Navy hovercrafts, hovercraft before down there. Pretty neat. But I did take, you know, some clips and pictures and stuff that I've, I've put together. I haven't posted it yet. I'm trying to find music for it. I tell you, if any of the things that I do that have music, I do spend an inordinate amount of time trying to find a good you know good song or a good soundtrack for it or score um, so I'll try to buckle down and find some music and get that posted in the next couple of days but I think it's a little under 10 minutes or something but the last minute 45 seconds is just I just took my camera or my phone and tripod out to the end of the railing of the deck put it on there and just taped taped the ocean for almost two minutes so you can skip that part or if you like the ocean watch it maybe come back to it and if you want to relax and watch that little end of the video all 
I read Dune, the book Dune again while I was at the beach. Finished it up, well, got the paper back and finished it maybe the day after we got back. I'm kind of a slow reader, but I got through it for me quickly and borrowed from the digital library uh, Dune Messiah, the next book. Finished it up a couple days ago, and now I'm into Children of Dune. Not very far in. I've I read Dune. Probably this was probably the third or fourth time. And I remember one time I think I got two Children of Dune and stalled out on it. It does get deep and kind of confusing. I don't know. you know pretty decent storylines but there's seems to be especially in the second one a lot of extra stuff that you could cut it out and make it a bit <laughs> you could have sh made it a bit shorter but i did read a number of the author frank herbert's son brian herbert his books about dune kind of the houses and stuff there histories of houses and they're more they're less trying to get a viewpoint across or be as in-depth and more of just storylines and they were very good but I'm gonna try to read through all the original Dune books and then go read some more of Brian Herbert's Dune books I didn't really watch any YouTube at the beach. I have some catching up to do still. Mostly just hanging out with family and if I had time to do stuff, I didn't, you know, didn't watch much TV or anything either. Mostly just read. That's what I've always done at the beach. I don't know how much it's picking up, but boy, a lot of birds out. And then, um, you know, this is, again, this is Overlook Rock Trail. I did it before, you know, pretty much tried to get the, a similar camera angle. But before I came up this way and it went out, and this time I did the opposite to mix it up. And I, <laughs> I incorrectly remembered, um, I thought that basically it was real tough getting up level for a lot and then real gradual going downhill all the way no it was steep <laughs> it was steep at the end so this this morning coming up it was very rough and I, it was not what i expected so i was huffing and puffing and just absolutely drenched with sweat but, but you know then it does level out for a good bit and then i'll be going back the trail goes back that way and then comes down and the road is like right down along here. You can hear cars going along there, hear car doors slam. I don't think it's too far as the crow flies, a couple hundred yards maybe, but the actual walking is more. But it is, it will be a steep descent. I do remember that. And I can hear the water running as well you know a creek that went through that whole valley down there that i went beside and crossed a number of times so i can hear that that water there's a bee of some sort buzzing around me i don't think it's a murder hornet I think it might have been a honeybee, which is good to see. Trying to gauge the time. I don't want this to be too off along. Also this morning, uh, it's not quite eight or it's about quarter at, or quarter till nine. I figure as long as I leave here by 930, which shouldn't be a problem be going to the first church service in months 
so that'll be cool get back to normal I think it's just wind coming through knocking all the moisture off the trees so I have about 45 minutes to do maybe half a mile finish this up and then do that and if I get out early enough Hey, I can stop at McDonald's and get everyone breakfast on the way home. Go home and get a shower real quick and head to church. It would be nice to, to go to church again and be around other people. And actually go to a restaurant afterward. We've gone a, you know, a few times around town. We ha Oh, we actually went to the movies yesterday. There's a little community type theater that has $4 movies in South Charleston. The LaBelle Theater. And I'd never been, but we went and saw Doolittle with uh, Robert Downey Jr. I was about to say Robert De Niro, that's not right. <laughs> but uh, that was fun. We were the only ones in there, literally. Uh, it was the four of us and our friend, and we were the only ones, and whenever we walked in after getting tickets, Shane was like, I bet those two guys out front were like, crap, man, we were going to go home if no one showed up, and we ruined their evening, but <laughs> but uh, it is nice to get, get back into the flow of things. They're having four services, three in the morning and one in the evening at our church and um, you know the earliest one is encouraged to be the you know elderly um, kind of like the grocery stores and stuff have been doing may have just heard a car door open down there Well, I think uh, I'm going to sit here and continue smoking for a bit, finish up my coffee, but like I say, I don't want this to run too long, so I'll quit yapping, but I'm sure I'll have other little clips of this, the beautiful end of this trail. So bye for now. Well guys, I can see my car through the woods about a hundred yards away. That last little bit from the uh, overlook has taken me about 13 minutes. Um, so a lot quicker going down this time than it was going up the first time I did this trail. But uh, until, until next time guys, thanks for tuning in.